This morning, I got up. I took a shower. I drank a cup of coffee using water that came out of the tub. I went to the toilet. I did a shit. Probably a lot of you guys did the same thing. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask. But you were probably hardly aware of doing it, and neither was I, to be honest. But that's me 20 years ago, when I was lucky enough to spend three years living in a village in a remote area of rural Zimbabwe, doing research. And then, my morning cup of coffee was made from water that came from a well more than 500 meters away that had to be carried to the house. And when I took a shower, it was in a bucket, using the same water for three years. And I believe me, I was a lot more aware of the time and effort involved in getting that water to me then. And when I did the other one, it was in that little house, in a pit in the ground. And ever since then, for the last 20 years, I've spent most of my professional life helping to bring water, clean drinking water, and toilets to people in parts of the world where they don't have them. Or, to be more accurate, working to build the systems that are needed to bring those essential services to people. And the reason that I do that is because what for me was an exciting way to spend three years is for far too many people, their daily reality, that or worse. At least 600 million people in the world don't have any source of clean and reliable drinking water. At least 2.4 billion don't have any toilet, not even a pit. And because of that, directly due to that, people get sick and die, and a child dies roughly every two minutes from diarrhea. So, Statistically speaking, a child has died since I started talking. And I don't think that's acceptable in this day and age. And the reason that I use the word shit, provocative as, as it is, is to help to break through the taboo that surrounds the subject and that leads directly to this. A taboo that means that today, now in 2017, more people have access to a mobile phone than do to a toilet. But let me step away from the world of water and sanitation for a minute and talk about systems. We're surrounded by systems. We, by transport systems, by education systems, by health and social welfare and housing systems. And yet, despite being surrounded by them, we're almost entirely blind to them. We see what they deliver, but not what it takes to deliver it. And I think that's because when you got the bus to come here or the train, you don't think of it as a system. But that bus has a driver. It has to be repaired sometimes. It drives on a road that somebody's built, that somebody else repairs, to a schedule that's been set by somebody. And take all of that together, that's part of your transport system. Or if you or your child is sick, you go to see a doctor, and the doctor refers you to a hospital. The doctor and the hospital are part of a health system. And the hospital is itself a system full of thousands of moving parts. And when you go to the toilet in the morning, you probably don't think of that as a system either, but it is. You, know, you turn on the tap, water comes out. You flush your toilet, everything goes away and is made safe. And that's because there's a system. A system that's made up of water companies who you pay your bills to, of water regulators who make sure that the water company is, is meeting all the necessary standards, of banks who lend money to those companies. And the water companies manage subsystems, of pipes and sewers, water treatment plants, wastewater treatment facilities, fecal sludge management units, and fecal sludge is the technical word for shit, if you ever hear it again. <laughs> systems within systems within systems. Systems that rely on people and money and infrastructure and information to make them work. But here's the crazy thing, or the difficult thing. 
for the whole thing to work, for water to come out of your tap, or for something to happen when you flush the toilet, the whole system has to work all the time. And when a piece fails, which it always will, there has to be an ability to repair it. A healthy system is a system that can repair itself. And let's face it, it's when that doesn't happen, when the water doesn't come out of the tap, that we stop being systems blind and we begin to notice systems. When you can't get your kid into a local school because they're all oversubscribed. When you spend hours work waiting in an emergency room in a hospital because there's no beds or no doctors. Or when you turn on a tap and nothing comes out. And that system's blindness, that lack of appreciation of what it is that systems deliver to us, leads to a huge problem in my world. It means that now, today, up to 30% of the installed water supply infrastructure in rural Africa isn't working. Billions of dollars of aid and investment flush down the drain. And you know, when I talk to people and I tell them I work in development, I travel all around the world, I do water and sanitation, people are sort of excited and they think, what a fulfilling job, that must be amazing. And of course it is. But when I tell them that no, I don't actually spend my life digging wells in villages or making latrines, that I work on building systems, that I work with governments and help them to get systems working, they often lose interest. I stop being the action hero who I think they'd hope to meet, and I've become some sort of boring nerd. And nerds are great, by the way, I think. I like nerds. But <laughs> they're systems blind, and that's a real problem, because actually the most important development work there is is building systems. The only way that we're going to end poverty is through building systems. The only way we're going to end the need for development aid is by building systems. A few years ago, between 2008 and 2012, I lived in Ghana, which is another fantastic country. And I was there supporting a major initiative on systems building for rural water. And in the time I was there, those few years, we spent quite a lot of money, I guess six million euros, maybe a bit more, and we didn't build a single pump, we didn't lay a single meter of pipe. But what we did do was to build systems. And we did that by working with the people in those systems, with the users with the hand pump mechanics, the guys who come and fix pumps when they've broken down, with district engineers, the people who are supposed to plan and think about how to make the, all the multiple systems in a district work. And we worked with other aid agencies, with local entrepreneurs. We even worked with the minister, who became a big champion. And what we did with them was to seek to take away their system's blindness, to make them understand why so many of the water supplies they were building were failing, and to then decide to do something about that by understanding their role in the system and their relations to each other, to develop a vision of how things could be done better, and to begin to implement that vision. And we did. We planned, we budgeted, not just for new hardware, but to repair and fix the stuff that was there already, and we brought water services back to thousands of people. And no, we're not there yet. Systems building is hard work. It's often very frustrating work. It's two steps forward, one step back kind of work on a good day. But we have taken away the system's blindness. We have laid the foundations for the system that is one day going to bring water and sanitation to everybody in Ghana. When systems don't work, the results aren't nice. Pipes break down, taps stop working, shit gets into the environment, kids get sick and they die. But when we're systems blind, we make stupid decisions. We vote for people who say they're going to reduce tax and improve the quality of services. Or we give money to charities 
who, say, who want to use it to build new infrastructure. But when that infrastructure fails, they're nowhere to be seen. Yet what I've learned in the last 20 years is that if we take away our systems blindness and we work on building the systems at the same time as the infrastructure, we can achieve amazing things. So that's what I do. I build systems. And part of that is by asking people, including all of you, to open your eyes to the systems that surround you. Next time you turn on a tap, or next time you use the toilet and you flush it, think about how amazing it is that that works. Look at your water bill, see how much you use, see how much it costs. And the next time that you see a politician on the TV asking for your vote, promising that they're going to reduce taxes and at the same time improve the quality of your services in health or in education or whatever it is, or somebody comes to your door and asks you for a donation to build a well somewhere in the developing world that's going to bring a village water forever, stop for a minute. Ask yourself, ask them if you can, if that's really practical. Or are they just systems blind? And if the answer to that is yes, then maybe think about voting somewhere else or putting your money somewhere else. Thank you.